okay, which is x, y, l is that, and then m is that. These are vertices of a triangle. And then they gave us the equation of kl, then they also gave us the equation of km, and then they are telling us that n is a midpoint. So this word midpoint is going to play a big role. Okay, It deserves to be highlighted. So all the information that we have within the statements is recorded within the diagram. In cases where information that you're given is not on the diagram, please, you need to indicate it as well. Then they ask you for the coordinates of the midpoint. So remember the midpoint formula, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2, regardless of how you write it. Okay, Some people say y plus y1, or whichever format, guys. Né? Then they ask you to show that k is negative 1 and 4. This is k, a point where two lines are meeting. Remember, they gave us the equation of kl, and they also gave us the equation of km. So at a point where two lines are meeting, we're saying that those lines will be equal to each other. So get the equation of km and equate it to the equation of kl. In other words, solve these equations simultaneously. Okay, you can make y the subject in both equations, or you can make y the subject in the first equation. Let's say y is equal to 5x plus 9 get this y and then replace it there. You solve for x. And then that x, get it, substitute it in either equations and get the values of y. So when lines are meeting, the lines are equal. Then the equation of a line that is passing through k and n, k and n, so you know the coordinates of n, we know the coordinates of k. You just need to get the gradient, which is the m, and then get the y-intercept. Then you're good to go. Then gradient of the line LM, use the gradient formula, okay, and hence, so this word hence is like from where you stopped. So after getting this gradient, can we use that gradient to prove that KN is perpendicular? Remember what we said, get the gradient of LN, sorry, LM, you multiply it by the gradient of KN. If you get a negative one, then draw a conclusion. 3.5, they are telling us we have this point J that is, on the same line as LM, and they are telling us that those points are collinear. Calculate A, use the gradient. Okay, then the size of the angle of inclination. So when we have angles of inclination, we have M is equal to the tan of theta. Okay, theta is our angle of inclination between the x-axis and that line. Okay, we normally prefer using the positive x-axis. Okay, so this angle is what they want. So remember, for you to get that angle, you need to know the gradient. Okay? So we can say theta will be the arctan of the gradient of that line. Now, if it so happens that you get a negative value, okay? It's a negative 120, just plus 180, so that you end up with a positive answer. So regardless of which value you get, for as long as it's a negative, you need to always give us a positive answer. Then if the answer is positive, well and good. Now, there are cases or there are scenarios whereby we apply Euclidean geometry. Where let's say a triangle is drawn but the lines are not reaching. Yes, you are allowed to extend that line. Okay, let's say if they wanted the angle of inclination of Km, extend the line till it meets the x-axis. Use the gradient and then find that angle. Or sometimes you can be given this as a theta, then this as a beta, and then Maybe this is alpha. And then they ask for the missing kind of angle. Okay, So just know how to work around with that. That's what they said about the Euclidean properties. Okay, So always, we know that this angle will be the same as this angle. Okay, And then this angle and this angle will be that. Exterior angles and all of that, guys. Ne? We need to remember that. Question number four that deals with the circles. So with the circles, we need to know the general equation of a circle. It's x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's if the circle is passing through the origin. If it's passing through points other than the origin, then x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared, where a and b represent the coordinates of the center. That we need to remember. And then at times you can be given a generalized equation and then they ask you to transform it back into this. So that's where we apply the completing of squares. Okay, we need to complete the squares and get that right. 
so here as an example where the circle has drawn for us and it's passing through the origin and we have points that are missing and then they are telling us that there's a tangent okay so when there's a tangent chances are high we're going to apply the euclidean concepts then they want the equation of the circle so since the circle is passing through the origin all we need is just the radius we have the origin which is zero for x and then zero for y use oq and then get the distance formula that will be our radius and then substitute it there then the length tq 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 this length so we know that um, oq is a radius but then even ot is also a radius of the same circle so which means the distance that we got here must be the same distance that you have there if let's say it's a five then these coordinates are going to be five zero then after getting the five zero then get that distance using the distance formula then the equation of oq oq equation so that is a straight line mx plus c okay the c we already have it as the y intercept which is a zero so focus on just the gradient then the equation they want the coordinates of p when you look at p p is a point that is meeting the circle now we got the equation of oq which oq is the same as the pq it's the same line for us to get the coordinates here remember p is meeting the circle so get the equation of that line and then solve it simultaneously with the equation of the circle okay let's say y is equal to let's say negative 4 over 3 i'm just saying if that is our equation so this equation will be solved simultaneously with the equation of the circle where there is y replace this and then solve for x so you'll get two values so it will form some sort of a quadratic one of the values will be x and then the other value will be a negative value somewhere there get that negative value you can even substitute it into the equation of the line or the equation of the circle and then get the y value equation of qr okay remember qr is a tangent ne? and for tangents and uh, lines from the center they will be perpendicular tan diameter tangent and the diameter will be perpendicular so since you have the equation of this or you have the gradient of this you can find the gradient of that and you get that so that equation will also be used to help you find k all right so that is to do with analytical geometry but before i leave it there is this question that talks about two circles okay so let's say we have two circles this circle with center a and then we have another circle that is b question can come and ask you to prove whether these circles are touching at one point at two points or they are not touching at all let me have another scenario here where the circles are touching at one point and then the last scenario where the circles are now touching at two points okay so with this let's say the first